This is a uh, 870 Express, uh, a lightweight Smith & Wesson, a Springfield M1A, a uh, Alaska Bear guy. What do people use something like this for? It, this is specifically for home defense. There's not a week that goes by that we don't have somebody stand where you're standing and say, somebody tried to kick down my door while I was at home. How many guns do you have? Quite a few, probably 50 or more. You have 50 guns? At least. At least? At least, yeah. Explain this to me. Why do they buy guns if they're worried about the state of the economy? Well, the underlying fear is that if things go bad enough and say the government were to default and pensions weren't to be paid and that kind of thing were to start taking place and banks were to start closing, the, the real fear is that somebody will try to come take what you've got. The collapse is coming. It's absolutely inevitable. Why are guns going to help you with that? Well, first of all, it's going to help me defend what I have from somebody trying to take it. But when people get hungry enough, and when they get crazy enough, and they got nothing left to lose, they lose it. You really think this is coming? It's definitely coming. Sooner or later, the television is gonna come on, the president, whoever he's gonna be, is gonna come out and say, today we default three to one, we can't help it. And here's our new currency. And that's what we're gonna have to and deal with. And you wanna protect yourself. Of course. This is Texas, a lot of people aren't willing to share if, if it's going to be somebody kicking in your front door. Think about World War II, right? That was not, that was actually negative from social product spending, and yet it brought us out. I mean, partly because you want to put these things together. If we say, look, we could use some inflation, Ken and I are both saying that, which is, of course, anathema to a lot of people in, in, in Washington, but is in fact what the basic logic says. It's very hard to get inflation in a depressed economy, but if you had a program of government spending plus an expansionary policy by the Fed, you could get that. So if you think about using all of these things together, you could accomplish, you know, a great deal. I mean, if, if, we, if we discovered that, uh, you know, space aliens were planning to attack and we needed a, a massive buildup to counter the, the space alien threat um, and really inflation and budget deficits took secondary uh, place to that, um, this slump would be over in 18 months. And then if we discovered, whoops, we made a mistake. There aren't actually any space So we need aliens. Orson Welles, be better. what you're saying. No, that's a, that's a, there was a Twilight Zone episode like this in which uh, scientists fake a, uh, an alien threat in order to achieve world peace. Well, this time we don't need it. We need it in order to get some fiscal stimulus. Uh, but no, I mean, the point but, is... But Ken, but Ken wouldn't agree with that, right? The space aliens wouldn't not work. So clear right, that. Right. I think it's not so clear that Keynes was right. I mean, there have been decades and decades of debate about that, about whether digging ditches is such a good idea. And my read of the debate is when the government does really useful things and spends the money in useful ways, it's a good idea. But when it just dig ditches and fills them in, uh, it's not productive and leaves you with debt. I don't, I don't think that's such a no-brainer. There are people going around saying, oh, Keynes was right. Everything Keynes said was right. I think this is a different animal with this debt overhang that you need to think about from the standard Keynesian framework. Uh, Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, uh, August 15th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome, everyone. GGNOnline.com is my website. That's GGNOnline.com. Um, you can check out my YouTube channel, DJarko2012. Otherwise, you can check me out on Global Government News uh, Facebook group. And that link, along with all the headlines that I'm going to cover, which is going to be a lot, um, the headlines and links are going to be in the video description on YouTube. If this is your first time checking out my videos, I start out with the economy usually, and then I roll in uh, to the war of terror and uh, the war on liberty or sovereignty. And then I move into Big Brother and eugenics so and some science. Uh, stocks cut last week's losses, uh, log three-day gain. And uh, just one thing, if you hear... Um, uh, uh, lawnmowers and that in the background. I don't know what it is, guys, but every in time I start these videos and I start them at different times, that lawnmower starts up and then they don't stop for like three hours, literally. They start weed whacking and all this crap and they'll do it in the rain even. And uh, they don't do it every day, but they do it and they start exactly when I start my videos. So I'm sorry that you have to hear it. Uh, it says here, stocks cut last week's losses, log three-day gain. 
And uh, moving on, China stocks close 1.3% higher. Then we have Japan's economy shrinks but beats expectations in the second quarter. Slow, but uh, still better than what they expected. George Soros, China will be the new world currency. I've heard uh, him say, uh, it was either him or Kissinger, I thought it was Soros, saying that the euro is actually the, 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 the reserve currency right now, along with, uh, well, he didn't say the franc, but I know it's the franc, Swiss franc. Um, but now he's saying China will be. So we have the world appreciates a steady one, says the World Bank. So that makes sense. Then we have uh, to stem its value. Swiss Central Bank considers pegging the franc to the euro. So it's like a super, super uh, uh, reserve currency to replace the uh, lagging dollar, right? So there you go. Switzerland Central Bank signaled Thursday it was prepared to consider a once unthinkable step, pegging the nation's massive overvalued currency Massive overvalued currency. Well, that's where the nice Templar and the powers that be and the pharaohs uh, uh, have their main uh, base, their financial hub. So it's not massively overvalued. That's where the value is. That's what helps fund world wars. And they hold all their uh, stuff that they steal uh, there as well. And they're always, uh, what, uh, neutral. Hmm. Foreigners slashed U.S. Treasury holdings in June. Says here, private foreign investors sold a record amount of U.S. Treasuries in June as the U.S. debt ceiling debate intensified, but China boosted its holdings uh, for the third month in a row. So they say they're boosting their holdings, and we have uh, some in Japan that advocate selling U.S. Treasury holdings. The idea that Japan would ever dump is 900 billion holdings of U.S. Treasuries. The second largest foreign ownership after China has been long been just that, an idea that never seriously entertained. But uh, don't forget, China has also been... Uh, 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 lessening their holdings of U.S. Treasury bonds uh, uh, since last year steadily every month, and they just did it recently. Um, it says here e ECB, or the European Central Bank, spent 22 billion euros or $31 billion on government debt last week in bonds, uh, reactivating its bond buy plan to try to halt the spread of the Eurozone debt crisis of Spain and Italy. Then the United States GDP growth rate, go in there and check that out. Uh, it looks like we're heading, we are heading back into a, quote, recession uh, as far as the growth rate goes, it looks uh, similar to this right here where we just plunge down to literally a depression, it's almost 7% negative GDP. Then we move on to commodities, which I usually do. Uh, check this out. Uh, those are just, they've just been plunging. And uh, you have Brent crude uh, up a dollar, almost 70 cents, uh, $109. Barrel gas oil futures up almost nine dollars. Then heating oil futures up four dollars. Natural gas down a tad. Then moving on to agriculture, uh, most of them were up. The big one was cocoa, uh, followed by uh, wheat futures and soy. As far as the metals go, uh, copper's at four hundred five dollars and thirty cents, up almost two dollars. Gold up fifteen dollars and forty cents, trading just uh, below. Actually, I'll just say one thousand seven hundred and fifty-eight dollars. It was at uh, uh, 1800 but now it's down it says here uh, that silver's at $39 and it was up almost 20 cents then proposed rule on farms called absurd new rules being proposed by the federal uh, department of transportation it would require farmers to get a commercial driver's license that's right and they're making uh, uh people who want to sell uh organic milk you know they try to get around it by what by buying a a, a license by buying a license uh, to sell animal food animal food and uh so that's how they do it being like uh and they say on the milk uh, not fit for human consumption being like soros and if you do that it'll prevent a uh, uh, federal uh, task force elite uh swat team scaling down on the red barn and uh, uh shooting cows and, and and hog tying farmers over selling real healthy milk being like soros and buying farmland reaps annual gains of 16 percent so you can go in there and check that out and um, it goes on there and talks about the bulk of the returns and rent payments from tenant farmers who grow and sell crops uh, from land appreciation uh, are the returns so go in there and check that out and it says investors are pouring into farm man, farmland in the U.S. and parts of Europe, Latin America, and Africa as global food prices soar. So a fund controlled by George Soros, a billionaire hedge fund manager, owns 23% of South American farmland. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Through a venture. Ooh, a venture. Why is George Soros selling gold and buying up farmland? You have Jim Rogers, who's pretty pretty credible as far as this rig market goes. Uh, it was quoted as saying, I frequently told people that one of the best investments in the world would be farmland. And that's why I say in the future, maybe in our lives, we'll see big huge farmlands owned by like just ConAgra, Monsanto, um, 
and uh, they'll be owned by those people, by these globalists, and they'll be run by these globalist agri uh, uh, monopolies or duopolies or conglomerates. And they'll have, like I, I was telling my friend yesterday, they'll have the big fences with the barbed wire around. I'm talking about in rural areas, they'll have big fences with the uh, barbed wire and uh, you know these uh, lightweight unmanned drones flying over. And uh, you'll have a bunch, and they'll be guarding what? A bunch of uh, toxic uh, GMO crap, right? That'll sterilize you. Sugar declines, but it's going to be so expensive that, you know, they're going to need to do that. And people, are, uh, farmers are going to lose uh, lose uh, their farms in that. Uh, so sugar declines as India may increase exports. Coffee, cocoa prices gain and rice poised to rise with Thailand imposing curbs as U.S. crops shrink 20%. McDonald's raises price of Big Mac, Quarter Pounder, and uh, McChicken meals. And uh, said it was due to uh, utility prices. Inflation right, uh, rate set to rise in the U.K. Then U.S. consumer confidence drops to three-decade low amid economic headwinds. No, it's because they don't have fucking money, dude. Why do they say that? It's because they don't have money. It's not because they're like speculators. They don't have the money, uh, as much money to spend. They have money, but they don't have as much. So they have to change their habits. Then that's part of the whole uh, agenda here, uh, to be austere and to get in this green carbon where uh, everything is, you're just a consumer, you're consuming units, uh, you're just a unit, a product yourself. And, um, and that's how they want to see you, and they want you to see everything that you do as a consumer and not a trader like we used to be. We used to trade. We used to produce. Now we're just consumers. WB, the World Bank, warns of poor world market outlook, and they like that because they like going in there and, and buying out countries and, and uh, putting them into debt and stuff like that and taking over their natural resources. So, of course, it says here, Moody's lowers economic growth outlook than New York factory index contracts for third month. So manufacturing in New York was down. Foreclosures dropped to near four-year low. Then U.S. Postal Service wants you lay off 120,000 workers and end its pension plan. So there you go. I've been telling you about that. Uh, it'll come up in October, whether the default or not. Uh, unemployment time bomb ticking in the U.K., then average teen unemployment rate in D.C. is 50% uh, analysis shows. Then it says here, Obama visits a corporation where stimulus created green jobs at $2 million per job. So when they say, oh, it's going to create jobs when we build roads, uh, well, you're going to lose. It. I'm not even going to go through because I don't have time to say how you're going to lose jobs by that. So you just need to do your homework. Stefan Molyneux is a good person to uh, check out as far as that, how that whole thing works, the scam. Uh, student loan and how they uh, lump all these things like uh, uh, education into the GDP and that or student loan debt climbs and then pull another recession uh, for the U.S. economy. Looks like it may be coming, says USA Today. Then the 10 things, uh, the economic uh, riots and civil unrest inside the United States are now more likely than ever. So you can go in there and check that out. Uh, really good information on that website. Don't have time. D.C. Uh, is the only place in the U.S. where people say the economy is getting better, says a Gallup poll. Then 48% think spending cuts could trigger violence in the United States. More pensioners forced to borrow from their families. That's in the U.K. Then why Illinois can't afford its poor dead? So they're just broke. Then lottery sales set another record in Illinois. And what is it going to go towards? Oh, education and research and eugenics. So you like that? Education and eugenics. Emmanuel unveils $5 million fund for merit pay for principals who uh, basically just pass students who've been done down to their dumbed down curriculum. So that's uh, they want to reward these principals who've never teached in their life probably. They have doctors and uh, doctorates uh, degrees and um, they tell these teachers that are real teachers what to do and how to teach. So, great. So, it's here, Emmanuel defends tax increase for Chicago schools. So, he's going to raise the uh, uh, a property tax to the legal limit to pay for, what, indoctrination, re-education uh, camps. So, he's real big on education because he's a communist, of course, but uh, not your typical communist like you think. Illinois toll increase. Governor Pat Quinn signals support rate for uh, a hike on the toll than uh, New South Wales. Drivers ring up $13 million in phone fines for talking while driving. Then goodbye, free shoppers face the pain of uh, debit fees. Then moving on here, debt super committee ready for action. What does that mean? Defense cuts are unacceptable to some of the new super committee. That's because they work. They have uh, uh, ties to Raytheon and that. Appeals court rules against Obama care. Then standards and poorest faces investigation over possible insider trading over downgrade of U.S. debt. Then four European nations a curtail short selling. Fed says they're going to ease lending and also they're going to uh, uh, purchase some more bonds.
and Singapore's income gap uh, widens. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.